Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're going to talk about soaps and detergents. Very exciting stuff, I know. We're going to start by looking at triglycerides, of all things, to look at where do we actually, where do we get the chemicals that we use for soap from. We're going to look at saponification, which is the chemical reaction we use to make soap from a naturally occurring triglyceride. We're then going to look at soaps and detergents and see, have a closer look at their structure and see how they're similar and different. We're going to look at them as a type of chemical called a surfactant. And we're going to see how the chemistry of soaps and detergents allows us to use them for cleaning. So let's have a look at triglycerides. So triglyceride, so tri being three and glyceride relating to glycerol. Triglycerides are a chemical um, that, that are naturally occurring lipids, so fats or oils that we might find in plant or animal tissue, they exist inside us. They are an ester, a, a three-pronged ester formed from glycerol, which is this section in the blue over here, and these fatty acids, three of them. Now what we're seeing here in this particular image is showing uh, two different types of fatty acids, what we call saturated fatty acids with all available carbons filled up with hydrogen um, atoms, or unsaturated fatty acids where one or more pairs of carbon atoms have had hydrogens removed to give double or triple bonds um, depending on whether we've got only one this is be a mono unsaturated if we've got several of them that we have a poly unsaturated fatty acid but the idea is that that chemically speaking that this is an ester we can see the ester group here um, that glycerol has three OH groups in this uh, in these kind of spots um, and then we can break this ester down to form these fatty acids and glycerol. And that's the basis of saponification. So the saponification is the chemical reaction used to hydrolyze or break down the ester to form um, the glycerol molecule and these carboxylate ions. Okay, so what we do, rather than hydrolyzing an ester with water, which works but is otherwise... Um, inefficient because it forms an equilibrium. If we use a hydroxide ion instead, then what we get is that we get a reaction that drives completely to the right hand side. And in doing so, we form the glycerol that we, um, which is here, but particularly we form these carboxylate ions. So that is, it's the, the soluble um, compound formed from the fatty acid. Now, depending on whether these groups are the same or different, we will get similar or different soap molecules over here, but we notice that it's a sodium salt um, with this carbon chain. Okay, and these molecules are what we refer to as soap. Okay, so it's basically the salt that's formed, that's kind of gelled together into a bar or into a pump pack or whatever um, for us to use. Um, and we're going to look at, at how that structure works in a second. So this is kind of a closer look at the structure of a soap molecule. So this is, we're saying that that's the the, the anion that forms from the um, carboxylic acid group of the fatty acid combined with the sodium ion because it's a salt. But we notice we've got two sections of this molecule. Um, so sodium stearate is one example, really common example that we would use um, as a soap. Um, so we have an anionic polar head. If you imagine this to be like a, a, a really kind of long, like an insect, I suppose. Maybe you don't want to do that, but let's picture it that way anyway. So this is a polar head, um, and it's anionic. That is, it's negatively charged. Um, and then we have a long nonpolar tail, okay? Um, so this is the, the carbon chain, that this is nonpolar. So this is a molecule where we've got a polar part and a nonpolar part, but we've got a distinct difference in their size. We refer to the polar part as hydrophilic, water-loving. Okay, that's Greek for water loving. Whereas the long carbon chain we refer to as the opposite, that is hydrophobic. Okay, thinking about phobia like in arachnophobia or things like that. So it's a hydro fearing, water fearing, water hating, that this idea um, that these two parts of the molecule interact with water in a very different way. They either have a strong affinity for it down this end or they will move away from it down this end. This is how a soap molecule is actually to, able to work as effectively. But how is a detergent molecule similar and different? Well, so what we've got here, we've got an example of our sodium stearate, just kind of here for comparison. That's the carboxylate C00- minus kind of group up here. But detergent molecules come in three different types. So then the, the chemistry of the polar head at the end is different. 
it could be an, a different type of anion. So this is like, a, this is called a sulfonate. Um, or you might see this um, thinking about like um, alkyl sulfates or things like that. You might notice on the back of shampoo packets and stuff. Um, we have a cationic version. That is, it's a positively charged version that's typically based around ammonium. Or we have a non-ionic but polar head here that's got often lots of oxygens and it ends in a, an alcohol group. Okay, so we've got anionic, cationic, and non-ionic detergents. Okay, whereas soap just comes in one variety. Okay, they all still have the similar kind of properties of the polar head versus a non-polar tail. Okay, that non-polar tail is long and hydrophobic, but the idea is detergents don't come from fatty acids. We chemically produce them from other things um, and we use them for, um, for different purposes. So soaps are more um, based off a natural product um, for you know, where, wherever that natural product comes from. Our detergents originate from different places. But we also, the fact that we have three different types of polar heads means that we can have different properties, which is very useful. Okay, that they can produce a little less foam, or perhaps then they may um, not precipitate with different ions that are dissolved in solution, like in hard water, that those things that muck up the effectiveness of soap. So that's some of the difference there. So soaps and detergents are molecules we describe as surfactants. A surfactant is a molecule that can lower the surface tension of water, stop it from beading up together into a sphere as much. But especially in this context, what, it, what we more focus on is the fact that surfactants can be used to disperse dirt and grease throughout a sample of water because it bundles them up into really small particles that can be dissolved. Now, the way that it does that is by the formation of this thing called a micelle which is over here. So each of these little molecules represents one of our soap or detergent molecules. The green kind of wiggly hydrophobic tail and the red circle is the polar ionic head. And so what happens is that the, you notice that the, the non-polar kind of tails all kind of pull in towards each other. But the idea is that they're thinking about that this is dissolved in water. So they pull in towards each other, but away from the water molecule and they form this little bundle that then means that then all the, the polar heads kind of sur uh, surround like a bubble on the outside and then the non-polar bits are surrounded in the middle. So it actually kind of uses the, the, this group formation to minimise the, the problem of the chemistry here. But what that means is that these non-polar tail bits can interact with a, um, a, a droplet of oil or, or something that's greasy, something that's also not water loving. Um, and so it, it allows it to be dissolved there. And I'll show a bit more of that process here. So let's say you've got dirty fabric. So it's fabric that's got a dirt or a greasy stain or something on it. We have these surfactant molecules dissolved in the water that surround it. The idea is that then as it comes closer to this, this greasy dirt, that the non-polar, non the hydrophobic tails start to interact with it and surround it. So they start to pull it away from the surface and then they surround it like a bubble. And then that, the fact that these groups around the outside interact with water really well means that then they can become surrounded by water being dissolved. So the greasy dirt has become surrounded by this layer of detergent, which is then surrounded by a layer of water. And when you get those particles being small enough, that then that dirt is now completely dissolved and it's mixed in. We formed an emulsion um, of the oil and the water, things that normally wouldn't mix due to the fact that we've got those two different ends of the molecule. Okay, so the non-polar tail, which binds to the grease, we form the micelle, which then gets surrounded by water. So we looked at the structure of triglycerides, these naturally occurring lipids, so fats or oils, that are an ester formed from a fatty acid and glycerol. When we, we can take that triglyceride and chemically we can break it down or hydrolyze that ester using sodium hydroxide in a process we call saponification or the making of soap. Um, we can... We then looked at the structure of soap molecules, which are the, the carboxylate anions formed from these fatty acids like sodium stearate. Um, we also looked at detergents, which are similar to soaps but have a slightly different um, polar end to them. Um, they can be anionic, cationic or non-ionic altogether. We looked at the, the how surfactants work by the formation of a micelle, this bubble within a bubble that allows the oil or the grease or the, the dirt to be surrounded and then dissolved. And we saw that that's how soaps and detergents are able to help clean and, um, you know, based on their, it helps us to understand their end use. All right. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.